Meet Carlos Sainz Sr. Two-time World Rally Champion, three-time Dakar winner, and one of the drivers spearheading Audi's campaign to win the world's toughest race on electric power. So that looked utterly immense out there. What's it like driving it? Well, actually, I, I think you will enjoy it. It's, it's, it's nice to drive, even if it yeah. is a, a big car, high car, because obviously the travel suspension, uh, I think you, you will have certain, certain <laughs> joy to, to drive because we have been working in the way that the car has to react uh, well and, and trying to make a car that is working somehow similar to a, a, a normal car. Yeah, and what, okay, what advantage does electricity have for you over petrol cars at Dakar? Well, first of all, we don't have to change gear, and that is an important advantage because when you are driving blind in the Dakar, you don't know what is coming. Doesn't matter what gear, uh, you know, you always, in a normal car, you need to think, shall I go in one gear down? or second or third or fourth or whatever in the dunes you need to choose your gear you need to be very careful do not get stuck if you are in the wrong gear here this problem is out because you don't need to change gear so when you just have to concentrate in braking release the brake and throttle and concentrating more in the in the road because you are always in the right gear so that is a good advantage either in road and in dunes yeah. then the next big advantage of this car is I will say the immediate power, immediate torque. You, yeah. you don't have any kind of, of delay or turbo lag or, or whatever, it's yeah. instant. You can control very well the power because mm. the electrical power, you can really go nice in the, in the throttle and, and the power is coming as, as much as you want. So that is also the drivability is really a good point. Center of gravity is low, okay, at the moment we are a little bit high on weight, but the center of gravity is, is low, the, the batteries are placed in, in, in the lower part, so that is, that is good. Mm. So, uh, and it's, so it's an easy car to drive, so I'll be all right I think you in. will enjoy, uh, you have to drive exactly the same than a four-wheel drive car, you know, brake, uh, easier because you, uh, what I say about the gear, but as yes, you will see the car is steering nicely and, and no problem. Yeah, it seems to slide and jump quite well as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, this is very twisty, this car is not built for a twisty and, and, and narrow road, it's more yeah. for high speed and, and really rough conditions. So in cool. that way this is not the environment and, and the best possible uh, test for the car, but I think you will enjoy it. Excellent. That's, um, yeah, that's interesting to know, considering what we've got planned for it. Excellent. Thank you so much, Carlos. Thank you to you. Have a good time. Really take care about my car. I will. <laughs> because what we have planned for it is to take it even further from its comfort zone. Last thing I want to do is scrape this, which is the last thing Carlos Sainz probably thinks about when he's out driving it. We've decided to do something a little more interesting, says he, waving at a passerby. Don't forget, Dakar rally cars are road legal, but this car isn't really designed for this sort of terrain. It's designed to go flat out through deserts and over dunes and hit stuff head on. I just can't believe we're doing it. So yeah, what's driving us along is two electric motors from a Formula E car. And they're sucking power from a 50 kilowatt hour battery, which is small by electric car standards. But this thing carries its own onboard charger in the shape of a two litre turbocharged DTM engine from the old Audi RS5. So they've repurposed track technology to use in the desert. And that's just cool. But it's so simple to drive. Just like Carlos was saying earlier, there's just nothing really to worry about. No gears, just a handbrake, and I don't need that out round here. All I've got is one button that does forward and reverse, and that's, that's it. Throttle and a brake. 
and most of the braking is regenerative, so it just uses the motors. But all that stuff about electric cars being silent and smooth, hardly in here, I'm having to shout to make myself heard. But it's sort of wonderful in its own way. It's this new sound of motorsport. So I crept around the hill town of Beduzo in an electric car that did disturb the peace, tucking the 2.3 metre wide racer down inappropriately small gaps and introducing it to the locals. And then, once phone snaps had been taken and the offer of free drinks at Zio Pepe rejected, at least temporarily, I headed to a charging point. Listen to the sound of that winding down. Now, I know this is electrically driven, but I'm not going to be charging it up here. It's time to put this thing in its natural environment. So here we are, driving the Dakar where it should be driven. And this is absolutely amazing. It's, well, you feel like you're five foot above the ground to start with. <laughs> it's roly-poly and hilarious. There's so much squat under braking. It just dives in. And then you have to wait for the momentum to come back a bit. <laughs> listening to the engine, it's like listening to the refrigerator on the back of a big truck. It just goes constantly. It's really off-putting to start with because all you can think about is trying to get the engine revs to match what the car's doing, but of course it doesn't, it's absolutely constant. The driver has no control over the internal combustion engine. It simply starts and stops when the system decides it needs to charge the battery. I can't believe how agile it is and how much that instant torque of electric is so drivable and I hadn't really expected that at all. I thought it might be a bit of a handful. I drove Stefan Petterhansel's Dakar Mini 10 years ago and my word that was such a rough car to drive this feels amazing by comparison it doesn't feel terrifically fast in a straight line but it just dances like I wouldn't have believed a two-ton car that's 2.3 meters wide could possibly possibly do the RSQ is an overgrown RC car not as nimble as a WRC car, of course. It's much bigger, heavier and more ponderous. But it understands rhythm and flow in the same way. Scandi flicks come naturally. And as for the handbrake, well, that's a one-yank hero mode. You can pretty much use it whenever you like because unlike a WRC car or a petrol rally car where you have to, it interrupts the torque flow, here it's just, well, it's just managed better. Fair play, Audi. I love, love, love the fact that you've gone to Dakar and done it differently and done it amazingly. I've often thought that Dakar would be amazing to do. Well, I think it would be if you're in one of these because it feels incredible. They engineered this from start to finish in about 16 months. And oh my God, it's absolutely intense what it's capable of. It's going to take me a while to process what I've just experienced because this is a mad, mad off-road spaceship that moves in strange ways and makes weird noises. The major takeaway from it is the way that the electric works with the internal combustion engine because the internal combustion engine, it just sounds like one of those refrigerated trucks. It just starts up at random and fires at random. And the first time it happens, you honestly think you've blown a wheel bearing or something, but the quality of it, the way it's all been integrated and developed. So you've got this beautifully light steering which is so accurate and this wonderful handbrake, bit of a highlight of this, I'm taking that one home, and then the brakes and throttle which are just so controllable. It's not terrifically fast but my god I never expected it to be this well balanced and playful. But what I really want to show you in here is these buttons. Now they are ludicrously complicated but there are some that I know what they do. So if I turn my mode button from mode one 
to mode two, the checkered flags turn it into a camper van. That's the difference between race mode and road mode. So it's just the engineers and the software developers playing around a little bit. The next one shows a washing machine and that allows the front wheels to spin forwards and the rears to spin backwards. It's just a stunt mode they've done so it can donut and mess around. But the one I really want to show you, this is going to switch it into P2 mode and it's going to make a bit of noise. Wait for it to fire up, that's the high voltage system getting going. And then I'm going to press this button here. Watch this, you'll like this. <laughs> That allows Carlos and co to change the tyres if they get a puncture. There's one of the spares. Pretty glad I haven't needed it today. But honestly, what a weapon this thing is. I think it might be time for me to get gone though.